welcome to the seventh and last in our series of basic pool lessons. We've covered all the intermediate and beginning steps and we're now at the final point. The point where you learn how to play like a pro. Well, what to aim for anyway. Um, you know, a good player can make lots of difficult shots. But a really good player will make lots of easy shots. You've seen Calvin on the table time after time after time. Well, shoot, I could have done that. He had all easy shots. Well, that's because of position. If you scattered the balls around the table, put the ball there, made that shot, and picked it up, put it here, made it, picked it up, and made it, well, you could do it too. And that's what position is all about. Picking up the ball and putting it where you want. I mean, you're going to use your shoot tip. Now, you saw Calvin shooting with a broomstick. He wasn't using a whole lot of English for follow or draw, but he was getting position just with a straight poke, straight shot. And he did it all with speed control, harder or softer. He could do the same thing. The most reliable shot <coughs> for making the ball is a medium speed, dead center hit. That's your best way to make the ball. Anything you do beyond that, will maybe get you positioned for a nice shot next time, but it'll take some of your concentration away from making the shot. Now, what can you do besides hit it in the middle? Well, we talked about, just now, speed control. We've talked about stop shots, follow and draw. Those are all pretty much with straight on shots. Back it up, make it go forward, make it stop right there. And on all those shots, you have to really pay close attention to exactly where on the cue ball you're hitting it. I know you have to have good follow through for those things to take effect. That's fine, but it takes a little careful attention and you won't make as many shots doing that as you would with a plain simple shot. Then we studied English. Left English, right English. Well, we learned all about throw, deflection, curving, all the bad things that happen with English. So that's that's really going to throw your game off uh, compared to a simple straight center hit. Uh, and then you can do something called cheating the pocket. If I have a ball that's right next to the pocket here, I could make this ball hitting it on either side. So the ball could go this way, cue ball, it could go that way. And when you do that deliberately, that's called cheating the pocket. You're not hitting it in the middle, you're hitting for the side of the pocket. <coughs> And that reduces your margin for error. And as you get out to say here, you can still cheat the pocket, but not much, and it's more dangerous. And if you have a full table shot, forget it. Just make the shot. So you can cheat the pocket, but your margin of error goes away. Those are all things you can do to get position. And there are times for all of them. The simple thing that happens when you hit the ball at an angle, he cut shot, is that the ball, if it's hit with normal speed, <coughs> comes here and it goes off on the tangent line. What the hell is a tangent line? Well, line this up with a ghost ball. There's the line to the target, perpendicular to that. It's a tangent line. This eight ball is going to come off like that. It's going to end up somewhere near this dot. That's going to happen pretty much no matter what you do, unless you draw or follow, which we'll talk about. So the ball's going to come off on the tangent line. If you want to alter where the ball goes, the cue ball goes, and make it not go there, what can you do? Can you use English? You can use it, but it won't alter the path of the ball on its way to the bank. English only takes effect off the bank, remember? So to alter the path to the ball, you use draw or follow on a cut shot. Now, if I hit this ball straight in to the pocket, this ball is going to come off the tangent line, no English. I'm going to hit here. It's going to come over here by this pocket somewhere. If I use draw, what's going to happen? It's going to tend to come back toward me. But since it's on an angle, instead of coming toward off the bank in there, it's going to come off the bank 
farther down, farther down. Likewise with follow. If I hit it high, instead of coming toward this way, it's going to hit a little nearer and come back like this. So that's the primary tool for helping you guide the cue ball after it hits the object ball. The English is used for guiding the ball after it hits the rim. A, uh, a small thing. You know the, the 90 degree rule is this tangent line comes off at 90 degrees, but you've probably heard 30 degree rule also, this thing. And that happens not when you have a solid shot at close range where the ball is essentially skidding into it, but you have a long, slowish shot and it's just rolling along with forward momentum. Then it hit a quarter ball, half ball, three quarter ball, it pretty much comes off at that 30 degree angle. So you can also help guide the ball off the object ball with a slow roller like that. That will do the same thing that hitting it high with normal pace would do. I'll show you all that stuff. If I hit it hard with follow, two things happen. One is, I hit it hard, so it's going to come off on this tangent line, right angle, and start going this way. But the ball is spinning forward, and after a while, it goes forward. <coughs> The harder I hit it, the farther it goes down the tangent line before the spin takes effect. So if I hit it softly with follow, it'll pretty much go straight away. If I hit it really hard with follow, way down here, and then it'll start to go. So you can actually go around the ball <laughs> if, you're, if you're schooled at that. OK, that's ways to move around the table. I'll show you that in some detail in a minute. But give some thought to exactly what it is you're trying to achieve with your position. You almost never, well, most of the times, you want a cut shot of some kind rather than a straight in shot. Because a straight in shot, all you can do is go forward and back. A cut shot, you can go around the table. But there are ways to do it that are good and bad. Let's say I've got this shot. And I just want to roll into the bank and come out here and then sink the 11. That's what I want to do. Where should I try to make the cue ball stop? Well, this would be a good spot. I'm not going to miss that shot ever. I can try for that spot. Is that a good spot to try for? Well, let's look at all the places it could end up, the cue ball. This is an easy shot from here. All many places. So let's put the easy shot lines down from there to about there. Anywhere in this whole triangle is an easy shot. But if I'm catching this ball off the rail and trying to end up here, I've got a margin of error of about plus or minus an inch. If I use a little left English instead and come off like this, Wow, I've got a margin of error of like a foot and a half. Anywhere in here is good. So even if you're not very good at position, if you pick the right part of the good spot, you have a much better chance of getting it. So don't try to creep up on the ball real close. Keep yourself a couple feet, a couple feet is fine, and you'll have a much easier time getting your position. So as you look at a shot, look at that. What are the two? outside boundaries of a good shot and try to find a spot that's got lots of room for error when you get your position. The biggest thing I hear about position here is, ah, I missed this shot, I was trying to get position. Or, I'd have made the shot but I was thinking about position. I, I can't think about position, I have to just make the shot and let the ball go where it may. Well, yeah, it happens all the time. It happens to me, too. I was thinking about my position when I shot, and I missed an easy shot. So, the answer, of course, is don't think about position when you're making the shot. Think about it first, before you make the shot. Think about it back here. I'm looking at this shot. I'm saying, OK, I know I want to get in this area here. To do that, I'm going to follow a little bit of left English. I'm going to bounce off. 
come out like this. So I'm going to hit it high left with a, just a gentle stroke. That's what I'm going to do. All right, I know how I'm going to hit the ball. I get down. Now I'm only thinking about making the shot. I know how I'm going to hit it high left. Make the shot. Do not watch the cue ball. You want to know where the cue ball is going because you're playing position. But if you watch it, you will miss the shot. Watch the object ball. Always, after you hit it, always watch the object ball go to the pocket. It will really make you more accurate. If you watch where the cue ball goes, somehow it just screws it up. So there's some number five here has some, some things to do as you do that, as you think about it, as you decide in advance. When you shoot the ball. You know you're supposed to go six inches through the cue ball with your cue tip, end up with it on the table. And the actual stroke, if you go through it, you're not accelerating hard, but neither are you slowing down and babying it. It's almost like you were throwing the cue straight through the cue ball. Just let it go. Throw it. And I watched a five-hour series on how to hit the ball. And that was the <coughs> conclusion. You are throwing the cue through the cue ball. You are not hitting the ball. It's just like golf. The man who tries to hit the golf ball, he'll hit it all right, straight into the ground. The man who tries to swing the club, he'll get a good shot. So you're not trying to hit the ball, you're trying to throw your cue. After the shot, how high should you jump? <laughs> That's rough. Man. The Q tip ends up there, up there, up there, and definitely not there. And I've seen it go in all those places. So have you. You would think that when the shot is over, you could do anything and it wouldn't matter. But follow through is so important baseball, golf, basketball, anything. Follow through really means a lot. So stay there, stay frozen with your cute tip on the cloth, watch the ball go into the pocket. Then you can move, then you can jump. Okay, so you've made an easy shot, you've got position. Do it again, have another easy shot, and another. You'll have a run. Now, how do you actually make the ball go where you want it to go? If I hit this shot, sink it, no English, normal speed, where is the cue ball going to end up? It's going to hit this rail somewhere, it's probably going to hit this rail somewhere. Where? It's going to come off like this, come over here. It's going to come somewhere over by this pocket. for the first shot. Now, suppose I didn't hit it that hard. Suppose I hit a nice easy shot and the ball started to roll forward. Then we get that 30 degree roll and the ball will come off more like this. It comes shorter. How much shorter? Here? Here? Probably in here somewhere. So I'm just going to hit the ball slowly. Since I'm so close to it, I'm going to spin it a little bit of foam and see what happens. OK, it came a little bit shorter. OK, standard hit, 30 degree rule. Now, suppose I use right English. Is the cue ball going to hit in a different place on the wall, on the rail? That's right, it's not. It's going to hit the same place. But with right English, where is it going to go compared to this shot? Okay. Down this way, huh? Okay, let's see. Let's take the third shot and put it down here somewhere. Now I'm just going to hit a tip of right English. Not particularly hard because this is traveling English. And 
and I go through. Now suppose I had used left English. You might think that since right English took it this way, left English might take it this way. And you'd be right. And 30 degree stuff was over here. This will probably have a little more effect. Left English, maybe around here. Even more. Okay. So there's a spread with just simple left and right English, one tip. I'm not doing anything special, it's the same shot every time. So what's left? Well, there's draw. Now, what's, where, where's the ball? Where's the fifth shot? Where's this ball? Where's the cue ball going to end up for number five? It's going to hit this, it's going to come back toward me a little, so it's going to hit more like this. Let's go down, down here somewhere, probably farther than this one. Here. <coughs> Let's say it gets down here, somewhere around here. And of course, it, it depends on exactly how much. Okay, there's one tip of draw. What's left? What else can I do? Follow. Follow. <coughs> and the follow shot. Well, the follow shot is going to be a lot like the 30 degree shot, a real slow roller. So it's probably going to come over here pretty much where this one's at. Just plain straight follow. both together there. So you can see you can get pretty much anywhere up and down the line. Now what will happen if we start combining these things? You hear about people saying high left, low right. Well, using English and draw or follow. So if left English brings me here, short of this place. And follow brings me here, short of this place. You might figure that left with follow, or high left, might bring you even farther over. Say you, this is your next shot, seven ball, or the eight ball. Now I come over here. So high left. All right, so it came on this line. And if we do the opposite, and the opposite would be what? High left? High left, low right. Now, low right. Low right. Completely opposite. So I think low right will probably bring it down around there. Now, how many rails will it hit to get there? Probably, probably none. Two. Maybe one. Low right. Yeah, one. So it came down about there. So, without thank you. Without doing anything astonishing, just a tip of English anywhere around the wall. Here's your selection of where you can end up with the direction you can be going if you get harder. And all on exactly the same shot. So that's what you're going to do for practice. Set up an easy shot, get you some dots if you want to make it so it's easy to replicate exactly where it was. Easy shot of your cho choice and hit it with no English at all, see where the ball goes, and see where it goes with left and right, draw and follow, just watch it. After you see where it goes, then you can put out a target. Take the ball and say, I'm going to aim for this, this target, and see if you can use what you've observed to help the ball go there. 
Now, you're not going to hit your target, probably, but you'll find you can get closer and closer, and a whole lot closer than if you were just looking at it and hitting. On every shot, when you do that, you have to control your speed. That was the very first thing we talked about, speed control. So you have to get a feel for how far the ball is going first, then for what direction it's going. And if it's a simple shot like this, you can cheat the pocket a little bit. You can hit it a little bit thinner and drive it like that, and it'll come back shorter. You can hit more of the ball like I did on that last shot. I cheated a little, like you need it for here. So that's a, an elementary practice, but it'll pay big dividends early. It'll, it'll give you some confidence that your English is having some effect, <coughs> follow, makes a difference, that you can control your destiny. Okay, questions? Yeah. Yeah. I have one. How about setting up a shot, go through your thought process, tell it those one step at a time. What do you think of first? Second, third, work, and, and, uh, and follow through. Okay, he wants me to set up a shot and give you my thought process as I go through the shot. And it's a it's a longer I'm answer than you might longer answer than you might think. But the first thing you do is step back, like a golfer surveying his shot. And say, okay, I'm going to sink that 11 there, and my next shot is going to be this eight ball into here. And the only good place to be for that is somewhere down here. So I just want to come off this rail and go down there. And a lot of right English can probably do that, a little bit of low. I think I can rely just on right English. That took me to here with one tip, and that's fine for the next shot. OK. I've got to hit a medium speed right English shot straight into the pocket, no cheating. I'm going to hit it hard enough so I don't end up on this rail. So off here, off here, roll a little bit. <coughs> OK. Now, I'm ready to shoot. I know what I'm going to do. I look at the spot I want to hit. I stare at the spot I want to hit. When I come down, I'm right on the line. Left foot pointing at the ball. Right hand on this target line. Q tip on the target line, Q on the target line, wrist, elbow, shoulder, eye, all on that same line. Okay. Take a few strokes and then throw the Q right through it. And there's my shot. Question, what if you want to end up in the center of the table? If you hit it softer, will that happen? Yes. That same shot I just made, he asked, if you want to end up in the middle of the table, which is often a good place to be, can you just hit it softer? Yes. Short answer is yes. Now, you saw that with no English, it rolled into here. So if I want to get in the middle of the table, just a little bit of right English, take it down toward this three ball. I just hit it softer, so I want to get in here. So let's try that. The only caveat to that is, if it's a long shot, and you want to do the same thing, and you use your little bit of right English, and hit it soft like that, the right English will wear off before it gets there. Uh, it starts off spinning spinning like this, but the cloth grabs it, grabs it, grabs it, and pretty soon it's rolling straight forward. Question on when uh, the ball is <coughs> tight against it's the side. The object ball? Yeah. Uh, I'm having a lot of trouble getting which way to hit it. Get it both of them at the same time. But, uh, yeah. Okay, the question is when it's frozen to the rail, where do you hit it to make the ball? And the simplest answer is, indeed, both things at once. Hit the rail and the ball at the same time with no English. Now, if you want to get fancy and use English, you'll have to adjust a little bit, one way or the other. Um, but it's pretty easy to aim for that right, right in between the wall and the ball. And even if you hit it fairly hard, it 
should go in there. <laughs> that goes. <laughs> okay, we'll break up. We've got some people to help you. Thank you very much for attending all this class. <laughs>